Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Motorsport Factory. We are working on a 97 Nissan Ultima idle air control valve replacement. Um, I'm hoping this video will be helpful to you guys. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, you know, just leave them on the comment section below. Um, let's get started on the location of this uh, thing. So, on these cars, the idle air valve is located right down here on the passenger side. I'm going to try to get my camera in. Uh, it's a little difficult with this power steering hose in the way. I'm trying to get my hand in here. But it's just right down here, where, right where my hand's touching. So one of the things you'd have to do is this cable right here, which is this gray connector, we have to disconnect that. And then we'll have this connector to the idle air valve itself. We'll disconnect it. I've done this before. I've taken it out and tried to clean it out. It had a lot of gunk in it and it was definitely difficult to do. And uh, so um, I cleaned it out. It worked for a while, but it uh, only worked temporarily for me. So here's one 10 millimeter bolt here on the left side on the top. And then you have the, if you guys see that, the other 10 millimeter right there to the right side of it. This coolant hose is in the way hopefully you guys can see that uh, I definitely can you guys should too so this is where you're gonna need a good long handle um, ratchet with the quarter inch drive uh, extension and uh, quarter inch drive uh, 10 millimeter socket with the uh, universal joint and crack these two top two open and as you can see that's where your adjustment screw is um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two connectors um, loose now so to make the job a little easier so when you take out this connector it will give you a little bit more space to work with to get that that one bolt right there out okay so we're going to go now I'm going to disconnect these and then we'll head to the bottom side of this all right guys we are now underneath the car a um, couple of things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to move this bracket here. So that's where this 14 millimeter um, socket with a six, in, six inch extension should fit. If I remember correctly, it should go on perfectly straight straight in uh, without having to use a U-joint. Use um, if in the case you have to use a U-joint, that's not a problem. So 14 millimeter socket right about here and then... 12 millimeter socket here Then once you get this bracket out of the way We'll be able to um, have a little bit easier access. It's not these two hoses. I'm more worried about It's more the hose right behind this bracket when I take this bracket out. You'll see what I'm talking about But I already took this hose off because I was trying to record the video yesterday and um, My battery died on me. So I put the phone on airplane mode so so I can conserve some battery power. So what you gotta do is there's a spring clamp here. I move the hose out of the way. There's a spring clamp on this one. And then what you'll wanna do is once you get this bracket out of the way, I'm gonna move, um, oh, actually you'll be able to see it right here. So there's a 10 millimeter bolt here. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. If you can see where I'm, that's on this side, this one where I'm pointing at. <sighs> This is the one that's going to need the 10 millimeter box and wrench because you're going to have too many other things um, in the way to, uh, it's an, there's not enough room on the in between the bolt and then the, uh, so just use a box end uh, regular 10 millimeter uh, wrench. So here, and then the one I just pointed at. So you get those two bolts off and uh, so you all are pretty much uh, 80% done, so I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back now, and I got the bracket out of the way. Now that we have a better shot of this bottom port of Sherman of the hose, this was the hardest part for me. Um, this is where this little piping goes in, this little elbow. A uh, little spring clamp here, I had very little room, I had you know, my tools were obviously limited with what I had to work with. So I spent several hours just trying to figure out what to do about this section here. 
Uh, I'm going to put a regular, you know, the little screw type uh, clamps on here later. But I was just trying to take this whole thing out and clean it up. And uh, uh, where the little screw go? I'm missing it now. Um, all right, here we go. So, like I said, 10 millimeter wrench right here. Um, also, a wrench here. And then what I ended up doing, I put a little bit of freeze off here. And then I just pulled the thing out and it just came out a little bit more smoothly, even with the spring clamp on. Because um, I really had no room to really work with. So um, I'm going to take these two 10 millimeter bolts out. So that one and that one again, like I said. Uh, make sure you put a box in wrench here because it may seem like things would work, but it's not. If you look at the gap right in between the bolt and right here. You're not going to have room to put any, uh, uh, a ratchet uh, wrench or there wasn't enough room for me to put a uh, uh, a ratchet with a socket on it. I didn't have enough room for that. So I just used a box in wrench and worked perfectly fine. So I'm going to take these two bolts out and then I'm going to just slowly pull it out. And then I just bring it down underneath and uh, we'll go from there. All right. So I'll be back. All right, guys, so I finally got it out, which it took me a little bit longer than it normally would. Uh, so here's the old one, and here's my new one, which I'm going to put on. So obviously, uh, this one's obviously on the inside. I don't know if you guys could see it. Put some light on. Um, obviously, the new one's obviously cleaner. The internals on this one, on the new one, looks a little bit better than the, uh, than the factory one. But uh, anyway, so th this whole you know, tutorial was to give you the idea on um, how to take this whole thing out. It's not as hard um, as it is the first time around. First time trying to figure out what tools to use and how to figure this whole thing out. Um, I'm hoping this whole um, video gives you the idea um, on how this whole thing is. And... The other thing is this bracket is the bracket I was referring to that was um, on there. So this was pretty much clipped on something <sighs> kind of hard to record. But it was something like on there. I think it's on the other side. So it's clipped on over here on the back side of it. So the reason why I said... Uh, using a flathead screwdriver is to kind of prop it, kind of separate that little, there's a little tab inside right there. So just to pop it out, because this bracket, like I said, once it's on, it, it's kind of in the way. So like when I was saying those two bolts, when they're, if you see here, right, it was like that. So when you're looking at it from the top, those bolts are kind of hidden from you, so you can't really see them. So that's why I kind of took it out myself. So when it comes down to it, if if the cleaning of this was... A, I used a, almost a whole can of carb cleaner on this thing. It worked for about a week or so and kind of is still shutting down on me. So I figured I'd just replace it with a new one. Uh, lifetime warranty. Can't go wrong with it. It also comes with a a new gasket this one's actually a metal gasket versus the paper back paper gasket um so yeah 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 that's how it goes but anyways um i'm gonna go ahead and put start putting on the new one and if you guys are having problems with uh car shutting down on you and the check engine light did come on on me once for this code so i figured i'd just go and replace it anyway and uh, once we do that, uh, make sure you add more coolant to your uh, to your radiator fluid, radiator, because uh, it's gonna definitely, like I said, I got a pretty good amount of coolant coming out of my uh, drain. So, and some of it kind of, as you can see, spilled on the ground. Um, so I'm gonna start putting this back together. If you guys have any questions, comments concerns you know just let me know and uh i'll try to help you guys out through it if you guys are having a tough time with it the one thing i didn't do was i didn't open up this part 
to clean inside it. Maybe that would have helped me, but I didn't do that. I just decided to just clean the internals like through these passages here. Um, but maybe if I clean this up, maybe it would help. And you guys may look out with that and um, open this up. Uh, and there are some forums where uh, there's a guy who shows how to open this up and how to clean it out and everything. But I figured I'm just going to go replace it with a new one. Um, I think it's just much easier to just do that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting everything back together and go from there. All right, guys, I'm back at the bottom part of the car again. So I got everything connected. Got the these little coolant lines back on with the clamps. Got the bolts back on. Um, hopefully you can see everything. Um, if you can't, you know, just let me know. So I got the bolts back on at the bottom there. I'm eventually going to put uh, some kind of clamp for this thing. I'm going to leave the bracket off for temporary reasons. I'm about to reconnect these uh, connectors, the two connectors for one for the uh, this is for the idle air valve, and the other one is for the, I believe it was the coolant temp sensor. Um, and once you got it all back together, go ahead and uh, make sure you put some coolant back on, and back in, not on. Put some coolant in and um, fire it up and let it warm up and everything and see how everything goes. And uh, I'll be back um, after I finish connecting everything and putting the coolant in. And I want to let you guys know how mines went. And we are officially done putting on the idle air control valve for this car. So a couple of things you want to make sure that you have on is you make sure that the control... Uh, let me see if I'm getting the shot in. Your, your connections are on here. And make sure this connector is back on correctly. If you don't, you're going to start tripping the codes again. And then you're going to start freaking out. And maybe we're trying to wonder what's going on with it. But other than that, the car is running nice and smooth. Um, I do appreciate you guys being patient and watching the video, and uh, hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please post them on the comment sections below. And I'll try to do my best to answer any of your guys' questions. I am going to make other videos for this car. There's a couple of things I want to go over with this. So I'm hoping to see you guys in my next video, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and to this channel and also I'm going to put some details in the, the uh, detail section so you can join the Facebook page and post your ideas and stuff uh, as far as if you want to see what kind of products you guys want to see and what kind of tools you want to see because I'm also engineering and designing my own tools and products and replacement parts to meet and or exceed the OEM specifications if need be and uh, so I'm hoping that any of the products and tools and accessories and whatnot will be a great benefit to you guys. So I'm hoping to see you guys in my next video and uh, thanks for watching.